So getting the right kind of inverter system for your needs can be quite daunting. A lot of people don't even do it at all or they put it off because it's quite stressful to figure out exactly what you need. Doing it in a palatable way, getting the right system that's going to meet all your needs or getting it from a company or people that are not going to swindle you, especially in Nigeria, is quite daunting. I had to upgrade my inverter system recently and here are five things that I used as my guiding light. The first one is warranty. And that might surprise you because you're probably thinking why is warranty first instead of last, right? Well, the reason why warranty comes first is because you don't want to buy an inverter system and then immediately after the inverter system is installed something goes wrong tomorrow and you can't get any help for free so one of the first questions you want to make sure you ask when you're getting an inverter system is how long is your warranty that is is this a two-year warranty device is it a five-year warranty device is it a 10-year warranty device or is it a one-year warranty device the longer the warranty and lifespan of the warranty the better deal you're getting essentially because that means at any time you can call whoever installed the inverter or sold it to you to come and offer you some technical support. Now, the brand that I got my inverter from was Genos. They basically give you a one-year warranty on the inverter system itself and then a two-year warranty on the batteries, which is pretty decent. The second thing you want to consider is probably the specs and the reviews of the device that you're buying. Now, this specs part is probably what throws a lot of people off. Mostly because you have to sit down and calculate the number of appliances you have in your house and what devices are going to be connected to the inverter and whether it can handle it, how many batteries you need, how many KVA, etc, etc. Most people find this a little daunting and even I personally, I still haven't ever had to do this calculation myself because I usually just get help from whoever is selling this to make sure what they sold me is the right thing and that way if anything goes wrong I can always reach out to them and say look this thing you said would do this and this isn't doing it please come and fix it. Another thing to note is because I got my inverter from Genos they actually have a load calculator on their website so if I had wanted to do the calculations myself I could have. And moving on to the review section you want to make sure that the inverter system that you're buying is one that is trusted from a company that is reliable and it also needs to be one that has parts and replacements basically readily available in your vicinity so for example if you bought an inverter from china by yourself and imported it and had somebody install it for you if something went wrong you might not be able to find replacement parts or be able to fix it by yourself in your local vicinity especially if you're in nigeria the third thing that you want to consider when you're buying an inverter system is the number of phases that is do you have a single phase home system or a three phase home system now of course a single phase inverter will work on a three phase but it's not ideal so you want to actually check to make sure that the phases on your I don't know what that thing is called the electrical board the one that's usually installed in your house how many phases does it have and what kind of phase inverter are you purchasing for your personal use so from the website where i got my inverter depending on your power needs you can actually get anywhere from a regular 4.2 kva inverter that i did that's powering my entire living space right now to somewhere around 20 kva for larger spaces larger homes businesses and things like that so you're actually covered item number four is price i always say this to people if you're going into the inverter purchase entirely trying to look for the best price or the best deal or cut corners to spend as little money as possible you're already doing it wrong and you're probably going to get swindled or you're going to lose your money it's important to be able to afford what is going to be best for your own system so if you're already going through the painstaking stress of installing an inverter system and paying that money out of pocket you need to make sure that you're paying the price for the best solution now think about this for a second when it's time to actually pay for your batteries you decide to buy 165 ah batteries that are supposed to be larger than 150 ah batteries because they were cheaper than the more expensive brands right but then when it's time to actually start using the device you notice that the battery doesn't last as long as it should it's not delivering the type of power it should for the extended period of time that it's supposed to and it's basically delivering less than what a 150 ah would this is why it's really important to buy from a reputable brand and why i chose the brand that i did so you want to make sure in the calculation section you're not cutting corners and you actually get the best bang for your buck while also making sure the inverter that you purchase can handle everything you're going to be throwing at it. The fifth and final thing that I think you should consider very carefully when you're installing an inverter system is the location. So there are different kinds of inverters, right? There's the inverters that actually have like fans for cooling them down those ones can be quite noisy especially if you're somebody who actually works from home like i do you probably don't want to install an inverter system like that inside of the same office space where you're recording audio like i'm doing right now because the noise might drive you crazy it's also very important because some solar inverters generate a lot of heat so you want to install in a place where there's ample cross ventilation and a lot of air coming in so that the house doesn't heat up and 
I don't know, cause you cancer and you die. Although I don't think that's a real thing. But yeah, you want to make sure there's cross ventilation wherever it is you do install your inverter so that you don't have any problems in future, especially depending on the number of batteries that you're using and the type of batteries that you're using. So again, ventilation is very important. If you're not installing it outside in a shed, you want to make sure there's enough air coming in or going out or both so that the inverter system doesn't actually just eat up the entire place and it feels like a cooked oven. But also a huge thanks to Genius for making this super easy for me. If the process of actually getting this done wasn't so simple, I'm pretty sure I'd have been one of those people that ended up not upgrading his inverter when he needed to. I also like the fact that if anything ever goes wrong, I'm able to call them because of their warranty system and they would actually come back and fix it. If they need to take it, sort something out with it, they'll do that, they'll bring it back and they'll install it very quickly. Thank you so much for watching this video and I guess I will see you on another video that was shot by Kagan. Peace! Ta -ta!